Lord Jesus, we've come to thank you this morning. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for our going out and our coming in. We just want to say thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness of our lives, Lord. For you have done much abundantly in our lives, Lord. For we cannot thank you enough. Words are not enough to express our gratitude. We just want to say thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of Glory, for everything. We thank you for this church. We thank you for the families of this church. We thank you for our jobs, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for being there for us, Lord. Some, we don't sometimes we don't deserve your love, but yet you are, you are a loving Father. We thank you for your love, Lord. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your provision, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless your holy name. We say, let your name be highly exalted in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want us to re take our Bibles to Isaiah um, 59, verse 1 to 2. And he says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither is his ears heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you that he will not hear you. I want us to pray this morning. As the Bible says, it says our iniquities have separated us between us and God. So I want us to pray for forgiveness. Let's pray for his mercies. Let's pray that as Jesus Christ died on the cross, he died for you and I to reconcile us to the Father. Therefore, let's pray that Lord, this morning, he should re reconcile us to the Father once again for we have sinned that he should forgive us. Let's pray for the forgiveness of God. Let's pray for his mercies in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, we come to you this morning. We pray for your mercies upon our lives. We say we have sinned and we've come Lord to say Lord we are sorry. We say Lord have mercy upon each and every one of us in one way or the other Lord. We pray that Lord in any way in our speech in our, in our looks in our attitude, that Lord God Almighty, may you forgive us this morning. May you purify our hearts, Lord. We pray that God Almighty have mercy upon each and every one of us. We pray that Lord, may you have mercy. Lord God Almighty, we have sinned. And we've come this morning, Lord, to pray and ask for your forgiveness. That may you forgive each and every one of us. We've come, to Lord, to you to say that we have sinned. We have sinned against our brother. We have sinned against our sisters. We have sinned against our parents. We have sinned against you, Lord. We say forgive us. Have mercy upon us, O God, for you are a God of mercy. You've sent your son to the cross of Calvary because of us, Lord. Therefore, we don't want that, uh, uh, the work on the cross to be in vain. For the work on the cross to be useless. Therefore, we say, Lord, have mercy upon us and purify us with the blood of Jesus. Lord, may you sanctify us, Lord. Make us holy this morning. May, Lord, we've come to you, Lord. That may you pour the blood and wash us clean and purify us this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. I want us to pray. Now that we've, we've asked for forgiveness, we want to pray that Holy Spirit should come and take over this service. To come and do what only he can do. For we cannot do anything on our own. We depend on him. We trust in him. Therefore, lift up your voice and invite the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let him come and fill us to take his place in our midst. In the mighty name of Jesus. Church, lift up your voice and invite the presence of the Holy Ghost. Lord Jesus, we invite your mighty presence. We say, come and fill us, Lord. Holy Spirit, come and saturate this atmosphere with your power. Come and, and, and saturate this atmosphere. Lord, for we cannot do anything on our own. We trust in you, Holy Spirit. We, live, we give all unto you. We surrender everything. We say, come and move mightily in our midst. Come and fill this room with your power. Come and fill this room with your presence. We need you, Holy Spirit. For we can't do anything on our own. We depend on you. We trust in you, Holy Ghost. We say, come, Holy Spirit. We invite you, Holy Spirit. We say, we surrender everything. We say, come, come and fill this place. Come and saturate the atmosphere with your power, Holy Ghost. 
we say come in the mighty name of Jesus. For we've come to draw once again from you. We say may you fill each and every one of us, Lord. May you fill us with your presence. May you fill us with your power. Holy Spirit, for we've come to draw from you once again. We say fill us, Holy Spirit. For we are thirsty. We are longing for you. Therefore, fill us up, Holy Spirit. Fill us up, Holy Ghost. Come and do what only you can do. For we can't do anything on our own. For we are flesh and blood. Therefore, we say, come and do. Come and minister unto each and every one of us. Come and minister unto our hearts. Come and minister unto this, the families of this church. Man, Tori, Masa. Kaban, Tose. Riman, Tori, Masa, Tai, and Orianda. Ma, Kuba, Sote. Man, Tori, Mandai, and Amasete. Riman, Tori, Koba, Sata, and Edamanto. Riman, Tori, and Adamasoke. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless your holy name. We worship you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I want us to pray. I want us to pray for the families of this church. We want to pray for families out there. We want to pray that God Almighty should have his hand upon every family. Every family that is going through one difficulties every challenge every situation in every family that god will minister unto them and to bring uh, to reconcile them to bring a uh, peace to bring unity in the fa in families we, we want to pray for our families pray for your your family pray for the church family lift up your voice and pray for families in the mighty name of jesus lord god almighty we pray for your mighty hand upon our families we pray that god almighty any plan of the enemy to bring division to bring confusion in our families that it shall not work in the mighty name of jesus we pray that lord god almighty let peace reign in our family let love lead in our families we pray that god almighty let unity reign in our families lord we pray that any confusion in our families lord we pray that lord god almighty may you bring reconciliation may you bring restoration in our families in the mighty name of jesus lord we lift up our voices we commit our families into your hands lord we say god almighty you are the god of peace you are the god of love Therefore, we say, let love lead in our families in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, may you unite us. Bring unity, O oh God, in our families. We thank you, Lord. Each and every family, Lord, that is going through difficulties, Lord, may you come through for them in the mighty name of Jesus. May you, Lord God Almighty, come through and bring a breakthrough, bring change in every family that is going through one hard times, Lord. For we know that you are you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. You still remain the same. You are still in the business of doing miracles. You are still in the business of, of bringing deliverance. Lord, therefore, we say deliver our families from the hands of the enemy. May you set our families apart for your kingdom, Lord. We pray for our families, oh God. We pray for the Calvary. We pray for the blood of Jesus. We bleed the blood upon our families, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I want us to pray for this nation. That God will use you and I. As this year is the year of the Great Commission. We want to pray that as we go out to evangelize. As we go out to, uh, to minister unto, unto the lost. We want to pray for this nation. That those that do not have... Um, personal relationship with the Lord as God, God should use you and I to minister unto them to draw them near unto him to bring them closer unto him to, because God is, 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 every soul counts God loves each and every one of us the same therefore he do not want anybody to perish therefore want to pray for the lost souls of this land that God will use you and I to minister unto them to draw them near unto him lift up your voice pray for yourself pray for the power of uh, the Holy Spirit to come upon you to be able to, to equip you to be able to minister unto the lost souls of this land lift up your voice and pray for the people of this land in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Lord God I'm we've come before your throne of grace Lord as 
as you have sent us, Lord, to, to go out to preach your word, to go out to, to, to minister unto the lost. We pray for the people of Canada. We pray for the city of Surrey. As we go out, oh God, in one way or the other, that may you reach out to your people. For Lord God Almighty, they matter, Lord. Therefore, we say, God Almighty, may you equip each and every one of us that as we go out to, to preach your word, that Lord prepare their hearts, oh God, wherever they are, Lord. We, it doesn't matter, Lord, because you are the same God everywhere. You, your hands are not short, nor your ears are, are, are heavy to hear us, Lord. We are calling on to you this morning. We say, God, equip each and every one of us, Lord, to be able to minister unto your people, to lead your people it's closer to you, O oh God, for you have put it in, in our hearts, Lord. Therefore, Lord God Almighty, may we carry your word out here to be able to minister unto your people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want us to pray for the sick. If you are here and you are sick, God, he's a God of healing. Therefore, we want to pray for healing upon every sick person. If you are here and you are sick, trust in the Lord. Believe in him that he would heal you. Lift up your voice and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, we pray for the sick this morning. We pray that God Almighty, may you heal your sons and daughters. We pray for healing in this house. We pray for healing, Lord, in this place. That may you, Lord, touch each and every person. Those watching online, those at home, Lord. We pray that, Lord, in, in one way or the other, Lord, may you minister unto your people and bring healing, bring deliverance. Bring restoration unto your people. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we, thank, we pray. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, Jesus. Be glorified, Lord, in this place. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? I can't hear you. Are we happy and glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. I want you to wave to the Lord wherever you are. Just wave to him. Thank you, Jesus. Take this time to just go around and greet one or two people as we're getting ready to praise the Lord. Move around and uh, see a couple of faces, new faces, and just uh, say hi to them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we give you praise, Lord. You are good and your mercy and yours forever. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Oh. From every nation, hey, from generations, we say we worship you, hey. Good and your mercies and you forever. Say, Lord, you 
are good. to us forever we're here to declare the glory of the risen Lord thank you Jesus just bow your heart before the Lord humble yourself and focus let your mind be focusing on you forget what you're going through forget about the situation that you're facing currently he wants to feel your worship. He wants to hear you worship Him. From the bottom of your heart, with all your strength, give Him worship, give Him praise. We're going to declare. All heavens declare the glory of the risen Lord. 
who can compare with the beauty of the Lord forever he'll be yes Lord the lamb upon the throne I gladly bow my knees And worship you alone Oh heavens Oh heavens Come on, raise your voice and worship you the glory of the risen Lord Who can compare, who can compare With the beauty of the Lord With the beauty of the Lord He said forever, forever Raise your voice and sing. Say, the lamb upon the throne, the lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow my knees. I gladly bow my knees to worship you alone. Oh, we say. to declare to the Lord for he's seated on the throne 
For he alone is seated upon the throne And no man can dethrone him Nobody can take over his, his place Nobody can take over where God is seated Father we declare that you alone are risen Nobody else has risen from the dead other than you alone God Oh we worship you this morning Oh, forever you will be. Oh, we give you praise. We worship you, our Father. Receive our worship this morning. We are here to worship you, Father. And worship you alone. To worship you, I live. Worship you. I live to worship you. Oh, we say to worship you. To worship you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh. Father, our life is dedicated to worship you alone. That's what we are here to say. To worship you. To worship you. To worship you. you have done oh God oh, 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 oh. hallelujah oh, oh. join me say
Receive our worship, O oh God. For the last time we say, oh, 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 oh. Somebody give praise to the Lord. Just we celebrate Jesus in this place. For he alone deserves our worship. He alone deserves our praise. He alone deserves our worship. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. In the name of Jesus. We're going to call our children. We're going to pray for them as they prepare to go for the Sunday school. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Oh, oh. Worship you, Lord. in your heart concerning the children I want you to begin to pray for them whatever the Holy Spirit has dropped in your heart just begin to declare declare and prophesy upon their life as they are going to start the school to study pray that God will open their minds and their ears to be attentive to their teachers it doesn't matter what age they are God can still use them for God is no irrespective of a person he can use anybody so Lord we commit these ones into your hand Lord commit their future into your hand oh God their plans into your hand, oh Father. Father, we pray, oh Father. We pray that as they grow, they grow to become men and women of God, oh Lord. The men that will change the society. The men that will change, oh God, nations, oh Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray, oh God, and thank you for their parents, oh God. Thank you for the teachers, oh God, that you are blessing their heart, their life, oh God. To teach them, oh Father, the ways of God. The way they're supposed to grow and to, to be, oh Lord, in the house of the Lord. So God, we thank you. Thank you for your favor upon their life, oh God. For you have favored them, oh God. For any plans that the enemy ever has against them, in the name of Jesus, we nullify and we rebuke in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, we bless you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Understanding and bring a, a, an ability to perceive that the message and understand the message, and so that our hearts can apply that which we are understand. Talk to the Lord and open your heart to Him, and uh, ask Him to bring a revelation, a revelation that will make a difference in your life, in your family, in this church, in this world, in this city that God has placed you and I. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are so grateful that you have given us the opportunity to gather in your name and to learn of you and that which you have placed on your servant to share with us, to teach us, to impart us in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to ask, oh God, that the presence of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit will rule and reign through our hearts, into our hearts, and to affect a change and transformation in this church, in this family, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, with the please be seated. I want to call on uh, evangelist Michael Ojima to bring the word of God continuation with where he, he started. The Lord bless you. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we come before you, truly, truly come before you to lay our hearts bare before you. And ask your Holy Spirit, Father, to speak through me, Lord, today, that I may speak your word and not mine to the hearts that are here, to those who have ear, that they may hear. And Father, we ask you to quicken the hearts of every person here that has been has grown weary, embittered, or have lost the goal that is in front. Father, we pray that that goal will be reestablished today. Father, we pray that you will take those hearts that are heavy and relieve it of its load in the name of Jesus. And we pray for all the hearts that are fat, O oh Lord, that you, O oh Lord our God, will cause it to realize what he is called, he or she is called to do. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, church, for giving me the opportunity to speak again of once this subject. Uh, last week, we spoke about the subject to prepare the way for the Lord to travel. Um, so this, we spoke about this, the word, the voice that are crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight in the desert, making desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up. Every mountain and hills shall be made low. Even ground shall become level and a rough plain, places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. How many of you want the glory of God to be revealed in your life? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, we spoke about last time about this message being preached to the church, at the first century church, as uh, the, the, the Old Testament church. And when I say the Old Testament church, I meant the house of Israel because they are the one, the first assembly or church that God had established, that he foreknew, but he promised of a second, a new covenant, and by which many may come from all nation, tribes, and tongues, which we know today as the New Testament church. And we spoke about how, I, we touched on how the, the Old Testament church, the has when uh, when God called it to be a nation of priests, a holy nation, and how God has called it to take His His messages light to the Gentiles to to many, and and then the same promise given to us to the churches today, so linking us with the same. But for we all worship, we worship that same God. It is that same spirit that spoke, that still speaks today. Hallelujah. So we, we, we touched upon that, how the, the Old Testament church fell short of that glory and went into slavery because they've gotten fat and they've gotten money, they've gotten wealth, and they've gotten all they needed and they forsake their creator they forsake the, 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 the true and living God, and which caused them to go into exile. And they back from the exile after 70 years in exile, and they, con they went back, continuing in the same path of their forefathers who were before them. And so the church that was supposed to take the message of God, supposed to be the witnesses, God said, you are my witnesses. They have to be now be made ready. Why? Because they have forsaken their first love. They've forsaken their calling. And a message has to be sent. And so before the message, they were able to uh, receive this message. Before, as we today, we celebrate, in many Christian churches, we celebrate uh, uh, the, uh, the advent of Jesus into uh, Jerusalem on a, on a donkey called the, uh, the Palm Sunday. Uh, 
before the Palm Sunday came, there had to be road, had to be made to prepare the heart of the people. Hallelujah. So we have to we go, go into the next subject, the so preparation. Hallelujah. Preparation. So we're going to read Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9. It says, and, and he told a parable. Who? Jesus. A man had a fig tree planted in the vineyard, and he came and asked in seeking the fruits of, uh, on it and found none. And he said to the vineyard vine dresser, look, for three years now I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I found none. Cut it down. Why should he take use of the ground? And, he's, and, and he answered him, Sir, let, let it alone, sir, this year also until I dog around it and put on manure. And then if it should bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. So, there was a decision made to cut a tree that is not bearing fruit. But what's purpose it is to take up the space? But there was a plea made on behalf of the tree before it was to cut down. A plea went out to the master of the vineyard by the vine, vine dresser say, look, um, just allow me to do something to the tree. And then if it does not produce, then it is all well. We can cut it down. So before the tree was to be cut down, there had to be a preparation made. And this tree implies to the sons of Israel, the first century church, and it does apply to us as well. We see the same. So the, the prophets were sent, prophet Malachi, to speak. But before that, Hosea, the prophet, was sent to, the, to, to speak about it. He says, sow yourself righteousness, reap steadfast love, break up your fallow ground. For it is time for the, to seek the Lord that he may come and reign righteousness upon you the same way that God sent his prophet to warn the church in those days he said he sent it to work, work, warn the church today to stop toying around with sin hallelujah Amen. to stop toying around with sin God takes sins very seriously God considers sin and all the things that are, are, that are repulsive to him, an abomination. He considered it a spiritual adultery. And the Bible tells us, why should you partake at the table of the Lord and the table of demon? Does, what, what fellowship does light have to do with darkness? So the church, if, you, if, if the church is toying with, this, with sins... God is telling you today to, to stop. You know what sin there is? God is saying to stop and repent and prepare a heart to receive his instruction. And so it, Israel was toying with sin. As a decision made to cut down the tree for the wages of sin is death. But the gift... Of God is everlasting life through Jesus Christ, right? A decision has been made to cut down. And a gift is given to the tree. Give manure. What is the, the scripture told us? I remember in, uh, that was in Corinthian. It said a ground that received the fruit, received the water thereof, supposed to produce fruits. But if it does not produce fruit, it is fit for nothing. 
Okay? We are going to come to, to that later on. So in, in Luke chapter 1, we are told that a person was sent. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the, on the high side, on the right side of the, of the altar of incense. And, Ze- and, 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 and Zechariah was troubled when he saw him and, he, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. And your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you shall call his name John. And you shall have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at, the, at his birth, for he will be great before the Lord, and he must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his birth, his, even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go before him in the spirit of, and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of, of the father to the children and the disobedience to the wisdom and ju- of the just to make ready for the Lord a prepared people prepared. Or to make ready for the Lord a prepared people. This is the task of John. And we read that also in, in uh, Malachi Malachi chapter 3 verse 1 to 5 and there it states if we go to Malachi chapter 3 it states there behold I will send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight behold he is coming says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, like a faller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, and they will bring offering in righteousness to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old, as in the former years. This is what was spoken beforehand. Then I will draw close near to you for judgment and will will be swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress their hired workers, in his wages, and the widow, and the fatherless, against those who thrust aside the sojourners, and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. That's Malachi. So, we are told that that there will be one coming, and he will be restoring, preparing people for the Lord. He will be preparing people, and we identify that as John the Baptist. And he came, and he brought the hearts of the people, the heart of the Father to, to uh, and uh, and the Son together. We saw that taking to, uh, took place in the time of uh, of uh, of uh, 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 when uh, when he pre- when he came. So Luke chapter uh, we see there in Luke chapter three that John the Baptist came to prepare the way, was identified as one who will come and he will bring uh, the people closer to to God, prepare the way. And the same thing we see echoing in in 15th year of reign of Tiberius Caesar. In the 15th year of of Tiberius Caesar, the reign of Tiberius Caesar. Tiberius Caesar reigned after after Augustus Caesar. Augustus Caesar, we know uh, right now, we know... Through Shakespeare, we know him as Julius Caesar. Uh, but that's the Augustus Caesar. When he, when he died, his son, uh, his adopted son, Tiberius, took over. And Tiberius reigned very, a uh, very long reign. He had about more than 40 years. And during the time, in the 15th year of his reign, uh, Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being the governor of Judea, 
and Herod being the tetrarch of Galilee, and his and, and brother Philip, tetrarch of Rain. This is not the Herod that tries to kill Jesus. This is this is his grandson. So, in other words, when you read the scriptures, you have to look at the history behind it. Because some would look at it and say, okay, how come the Herod was supposed to kill Jesus and now uh, was, or was also the same Herod that, was, that, that, crew, that, tried, that tried him? No, it's not the same Herod. And so, what, why am I saying this? Because to let you know that the faith, that you, what you put your faith in is not things that were heard, that concocted story that were made up. This is a factual history. Things are taking place. You can pinpoint the day when Jesus started to preach. You can pinpoint when he died by the people living around that time. And even the pagan can confirm it for you. Amen. So the faith that we have is not something that he is saying. You know, today, I mean, no, no, who knows who Vishnu is, where he's from, and who knows, you know, Buddha, what, where we, can we pinpoint him in history? We don't, but we, we have all the, all the factual document to pinpoint the, the coming of Christ. So why, is, why am I saying this? So that when you go out to talk to people about the Lord, you, uh, about the Lord you know what the Lord you're talking about. You can place him in the history. Hallelujah. You can place him in history and people know about it. So the Philip was Tetrach, was the brother of Herod. Herod was ruling Galilee and, and, and Philip was given the region of, uh, of Etheria and, uh, and Triconius. And during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of the Lord came to, 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 to John, the son of Zechariah in the wilderness, and he went all over the region around the Jordan proclaiming a baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sin. As it is written, look, the word of Isaiah the prophet a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. Even every, every, every valley shall be filled and every mountain shall be made low and the crooked become straight and the rough places shall become level ground. Hallelujah. And all flesh shall see the salvation of the Lord. And you go back to that f former statement Every valley shall be filled. And when you see what happened in, the, in, the, in, the, in John, you will, you will see these things uh, come to fruition, right? Every valley and mountain, think about the valley, it's a low place. Mountain is a high ground. Hallelujah. Crooked, of course, and rough places. This is not just speaking about physical things. This is a spiritual saying. Hallelujah. If you pay attention, let we, let's keep going. And all flesh shall see it. So they continue. And he said, therefore, to the crowd that came to be baptized to him, you brood of vipers who warn you to flee from the wrath to come. He's speaking to the crooked road. Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Do not begin to say to yourself, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able to, from these stones, raise up children for Abraham. He's speaking to the crooked. He's speaking to the, high, the mountains. He's speaking to the low, to the valleys. Who are the high, who are the mountains? The leaders, the leaders, the valleys, the low people. What did Jesus say? The poor are seeing the gospel being preached to them. The sick are being healed. The high mountains, what did Jesus do with the Pharisees and the Sadducees? John came and he's pointing to these high mountains, and he's pointing to these valleys, and he's pointing to these rough, rough plains, and say, you cannot hang on to Abraham. You cannot say, well, I'm Pentecostal. 
You know, do you know, do you know who we are? We're Pentecostals. Do you know who we are? We are Catholics. Do you know who we are? We're Baptists. You know, that's what they are saying. As Abraham, we have father. Abraham is our father. Even the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Back to what we said before. Luke chapter 13. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear fruit shall be cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowd asked him, what then shall we do? He answered to them, whoever has two tunics to share with him who had none. Whoever who has food is to do likewise. Task collectors also came to him to be baptized and said to him, teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, collect no more than you are authorized to do. Soldiers asked him, and we... What shall we do? And he said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threat or by false accusations, and be content with your wages. And as the people were expecting in expectation, and all were questioning in their heart concerning John whether he might be the Christ, John answered them, saying, Why would they be asking if he might be the Christ? Because many of them have heard the scriptures that a refiner will come and it will prepare a way. And the Lord, the, the, the agent of the covenant will come. What covenant? The new covenant. He comes to prepare a way, make a way path for the new covenant master to come. The Christ to step into the scene. And they were thinking, is this the Christ? And he said, no. He said to them, John answer, I baptize you with water, but he who is, is mightier than I am is coming. A strap of whose sandal I'm not I'm worthy to, to untie. He will baptize you with Holy Spirit and with fire. Amen. Amen. And hallelujah. Keep going. We're going to come back to that. And the winnowing shovel, here's the kicker. So if you go back to 16, he will baptize you with Holy Spirit and, water, and, and fire. With Holy Spirit and with fire. What does he mean by that? Well, some people understand it to mean Jesus will baptize you with Holy Spirit and he will baptize you with fire. Holy Spirit and fire. On the same person. No. Look the next verse. His winnowing sh a fork is in his hand. To clear the threshing floor and to gather wheat into his barn. And the chaff will be burned with unquenchable fire. Winnowing shovel. He has two gifts in his hands. He has Holy Spirit. If you want to be refined, if you prepare your heart to see the Lord, you receive the Holy Spirit. If you are ignorant, disobedient, and reject, you receive the fire. It's not for one person. It's for two individuals. The next verse tells you that. Holy Spirit and in fire. And you read, if you if you've even read the Acts chapter, uh, Acts chapter uh, uh, 10, after, Paul, after Peter baptized uh, Cornelius, and they were accusing him that he went and ate with the Gentiles. And he said to them, while I was speaking to them, the Holy Spirit reminded him and said, John came speaking that Jesus will baptize you with Holy Spirit. He left, he didn't speak of the fire. He just said Holy Spirit. So we, as we see in there that the, the, the scripture made it clear. There is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And there is a baptism of fire. And I don't want to be baptized with fire. I want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't want to be the, the one, uh, the chaff. I want to be 
the one that is put in the barn, the good fruit that is stored in the barn. The winnowing shovel, so the, the unquenchable fire, he will burn those who do not believe. So we see there that God was preparing for a people. God was preparing the people and he's getting them ready as he, as he is preparing each and every one of our hearts today to be ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But for Jesus made it plain to us to know in the word, uh, in his word. So what happened after preparation? The heart is prepared. What comes after preparation? Visitation. Let's read that, uh, uh, Luke chapter 19, 1 to 44, 41 to 44. To 44. Uh, Luke chapter 19, well, it said, Jesus wept over Jerusalem, and when he drew near, he saw the city, he wept over it. He's saying, would you, even you, had known on this day the things that, is make, that makes for peace, but they are hidden from your eyes. For the days is coming, pay attention. This is the, the, the fire. The baptism of fire is coming. For the day is coming. The day will come upon you when your enemies will set up barricades around you and surround you and hem you in on, the, on every side. And tear you down to the ground and your children with you. And they will not leave a stone upon one upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation ground was prepared ready hearts are made ready anyone who has to want to tune in give it to the one who has now what shall we do Oh, don't extort money from people. What shall we do? Oh, don't, don't demand people. Don't threaten people and, and store money, tax from them that, that is not appropriate. Refining. And he looks at the trees. He looks at all the trees, the mountain, high mountains, say, you brood of vipers. Don't say you have an Abraham as father because God is ready to cut you down and replace you with another per another. He's able to make this stone rise up. So John is leveling the mountain. And he's filling, taking the mountain and filling the valley with it. So the valley now become level ground. The mountain now become level ground. The crooked path made straight. These are these are speaking about the hearts of people. It's not speaking about, because when Jesus came, no mountain came down physically. He's speaking the hearts of people. So when that, is, when that take place, then the visitation, the Lord who planted will come and visit to make sure. And Jesus came, preached the gospel, those whose hearts were ready heard it and believed it and received it in. Those whose heart are not ready just pushed it aside. And so when Jesus came to Jerusalem, they rejected him, many of them. And he wept over the city. And you see, only if you have known the day of your visitation, I have come to inspect the fruit. I have worked the ground. I have made the ground ready. I put manure in you. You were about to be cut down. I pleaded for you so that I can make, prepare your growth. But now it's time to inspect the fruit. And you have failed the test. Some have passed. You have failed, the whole majority failed the test. And you, because you didn't know when the day of your visitation. So what we see here going on also, we see in, um, in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 5 verse 1 is a story of heartbreaking story of, of God, the vineyard of the Lord. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. 
This is a very poetic story. When you read it, you, you, you kind of see the heart of God, how he wept for Israel. My beloved had a vineyard on a fertile hill. It's not an infertile hill. Fertile hill. It's supposed to produce. And, let, and he dug clear it of stones. Remove everything that will cause that vineyard not to prosper or grow. He planted in his choices vine. Very, very good seed planted. He built a watchtower in the midst of it to make sure no one comes in and, take and, and disturb, disturb anything. What else did he do? He hewn and cut, he hewn out wine vats for it, getting ready for the harvest. And look for, uh, and, he, and, he, and he looked for it to yield grapes, but he yielded wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of, of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more has I done for it, my vineyard, that I have not done in it? When I come for it to yield grapes, yield the wild grapes. And now I tell you for what I should do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedges. It shall be devoured. I will break down its walls and it shall be trampled down. And I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed and briars and thorns shall grow up. I would also command the cloud not to rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the man of Judah and his pleasant planting and he looked for justice. Behold, there was bloodshed. For righteousness, behold, there was outcry. What more should I do for my vineyard that I have never done for it? What more? So God is pouring into us, into these people, into the, church, into the church, the first century church. God is pouring continuously. The same with us today. Many of us come and hear the gospel. God pour out into us all the things that he needed to us for salvation, for us to live, for us to grow in faith. God continued to pour these things out. And we take it in. We say hallelujah. But is it growing, producing fruit in us? On the day of his visitation, when he come to inspect his vineyard, he planted choices fruit. I mean, when you walk, you should be, you should be proud because you're expecting, you did all this work. You expect to find fruit. And when he comes for his day of his visitation, would he find it? And Jesus said, if the Son of Man come, would he find righteousness in the world? Especially his church. We all know that judgment begins from the house of God. We worship a God who is just, who is righteous. He's not going to judge the sinner with that before, be, without cleaning up his house. So many of us, you know, when you hear this message today, don't say, oh, you know, I think this message is for brother so-and-so. You know, you know, my sister so-and-so should hear this message, you know. Oh, my prodigal son should hear this message. My prodigal daughter should hear this message. Don't say that in your heart. This message is for you, for me, for all of us. Amen? Amen. To wake us up. To help us. The, the Lord said, those who I love, I chastise. So be, be, be diligent and repent. Amen. Jesus spoke to the church in Revelation. Let's see, Revelation chapter 3, uh, 3 verse 14, 22. I'm trying to go as quick as I can to make sure I get time with time. So the church of Laodicea, to the angel of the church of Laodicea write, the word, this is the word of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. I know your works, and you are neither cold nor hot. With that you were either cold or hot, so because you are lukewarm, 
and neither cold, neither hot nor cold, I will speak to you out of my mouth. I thought Jesus was for love, love, grace, grace. Yes, he is. But he's telling them, you are, you, either you are hot on, for me, on fire, or you're the cold sinner on the street. I'd rather, yeah, they know they're sinners. They know, they, we know that. But they, you're supposed to be hot. And when you look warm, how are you going to be? Have you, have you come on a hot day, on a hot day you wanted cold water? And you find lukewarm? Have you come on a cold day and you wanted hot, you know, hot tea and you pick that and it's lukewarm? Yeah, you can bear with me. You've, you've had hot water and, and, and cold water and you wanted to taste them and you find that it's not what you expected. It's an assault to your taste bud because you're already expecting something. And then, oh, no, no. I will spit you out of my mouth. Guess what? What Jesus spits out of his mouth, is he taking in? So, but here is the grace after that. For you say, I am rich. I have prospered. I need nothing. And not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, blind, and naked. Who's heard a story of the king has no clothes? Yeah. The story of kings, everyone telling the king he has all oh, nice clothes you have and until a little boy comes and says, no, the king is naked. But everyone is looking at, around and saying that the king wearing, uh, is, is dressed in a fine cloth, fine linen. And here is this, you are blind, you are poor, you are naked, you didn't know that. And I'm here, I'm done, I'm about to be done with you, is what he's actually saying. But because he loves us, because of the grace, he said, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire that you may be rich, truly rich. And why garment so that your, you may clothe yourself and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen. And salve for your eye to anoint your eyes that you may see. Hallelujah. And those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. So be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. We look at that and we say, okay, it's for the sinners. He's talking about sinners. It's, this is to the church. The church of Laodicea is saying, Repent. Repent and just repent. And if you listen to what I have to say, I will come in and sup with you. Israel did not know the time of his visitation, but the remnant of Israel knew. You, do you, you understand that every time God is dealing with his people, there's always a remnant. There's always a remnant. You can find a church full of Thousands of people, and only 10% of them are the remnant. Only 10% of them are keeping the church going and are motivating people to come. The rest of the 90% is just to occupy seats. It's no different. So, you know which one you are. Who are you? Are you playing church? Are you coming to occupy seats, empty seats? Remember, Jesus said the way is narrow, at least to eternal life, and only few people are on it. So, you may go to a church that is huge, massive, mega church, but Jesus will look at the same church. You go, oh, this church is bopping. You know, this is a place to be. And Jesus may look at those, that church, mega church and he sees maybe 10 people. So it's not about number. It's not about number, my friends. Jesus will want 10 hardcore Christians rather than 
thousands of lukewarms that has for, forgotten what it means to be a Christian and a Christian by name. You know, look at my badge. It says Christian on it. I'm a Christian. I, I wear this cross. You know, I, we on the street all the time. We're telling people they bring up, uh, you know, uh, have you, have you, are you born again? And they show us their cross. Yeah. As if, like, I'm like, what is that? I ask you a question, simple question. He's showing me a cross. Oh, I go to church. No, <laughs> I go to church. I didn't ask you whether you go to church. I asked you, are you born again? So, Jesus is saying to the church that they, we should be zealous and repent. So, if you are taking position, filling up seat, my word to you is to repent and go back to your first love. And I want to leave this in conclusion. Why? What must we do? The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, if we, since we are surrounded by great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Christ, the founder and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising shame, and seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So brothers and sisters, let us prepare the way for the Lord. Let's make our hearts straight that he may travel, that he may use us for his good will. And I pray that for each and every one of you. Give you, turn your heart if you have lost that fire. I pray that the Lord will rekindle that fire in you. Amen. If you have lost the fire because someone says something or someone did something to you or you are working and someone is not really uh, helping you out so you feel that you're alone, you're the only one, the voice crying out in the wilderness. Take it to God. Look up to Christ. He was the one speaking and people, re he was rejected before man, even in his own house. So do not hold that. Serve God and don't look at man. Look at Jesus. And so I pray that God will, that th this message will be written on your heart, that Jesus Christ will shine back in your life again. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We bless with the word of God. Amen. 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 All right. Shall we please rise on our feet as we prepare to give our tithe and offering to the Lord? Hallelujah. If it's your first time to visit us, we have multiple ways of giving. You can use an envelope at the back to give your cash, or you can use a debit machine as well on your right, on your left side. And those who are watching online, uh, e-transfer information should be on the screen as I speak for you to give. Let's pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, we surrender this time into your hand. We just want to thank you. We want to bless your holy name. Thank you for provision. We thank you for what you're doing. In the life of your people oh god we thank you for everything oh god for the breath of life for the strength to be able to go to work and to come into the house of the lord and give to you oh god so lord we say let your name be glorified may you receive our offering as we give unto you in the name of jesus we pray amen And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Say, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He has done it, oh, he has done great things, he has done it, he has done great things, hallelujah. Say, he has done it. He 
of the Lord. Amen. God is good all the time. Are you really happy to be in the house of the Lord? Because that sounding so weak. Come on, give it up a go. Thank you for the wonderful message, Brother Michael. May God bless you. It's good to see you around the house of the Lord. I just bring to you a few announcements. As you all know, we have an annual general meeting today. So that's why the service was short. So we will be continuing right after service. So please join us. For those that are new to the Restored House, this is our annual general meeting that we have once in a year. You're welcome to stay behind. Um, media is telling me to switch. Hi. One, two, one, two. Amen. Okay, so we also have prayer meetings uh, at the office. The office is open Tuesday to Friday. Please feel free and uh, you're welcome to join for prayer from 10 to 11 in the morning when the office opens. So every, is, this prayer is open to everybody. Please join us when we can, when, whenever you can and feel free to invite somebody. There's also need uh, for great, uh, great need for workers. So please, there's different departments in the church. And I know God has laid upon you different giftings. So whatever God is leading you to do, whatever department God is leading you to join, please let us know and we can plug you in. And as we are also looking for facilitators for some groups so that we have more people in those groups to facilitate. So please let us know as well. Um, let the admin know. They will make sure they plug you in. Projection department needs two more volunteers. So if you're interested, please give your name to Sister Victory. Um, if you're interested in the media or projection side, you're welcome to join as well. This year, the church will be having home sale. We, we kind of had last week, we divided different uh, locations. If you were not here, please plug in with, uh, let uh, Sister Victory know or admin, they will let you know which allocation, but most likely different groups, they know who they're assigned to. So please, the facilitators, reach out to your group members that are, were not here. And for those that don't have any allocation, please let us know. And perhaps you've moved as well, let us know so we can allocate you to the right location. And please update your names and addresses in the church contact. We'd like to have your full name. So at the end of the year when we're giving receipts, we want to make sure we're giving the right uh, receipt to you. And perhaps you've moved, please update with us as well so we can update your address and your full name in our church contact. Um, and also, there's lots of uh, international students in our midst that are looking for jobs. Perhaps some of you know, you, have, uh, you know places that are hiring even part-time jobs. And please let the church know so we can be able to help our brothers and sisters get um, this job so they can be able to work as they are here for school. So please, if you know somebody, please get their contact. If you know someone, connect them to somebody. And let's help our brothers and sisters. Um, Impact will be having our first official meeting of the year on April 6th. So any youth in the house, write this down. Make a note of it in your calendar, April 6th at 6 p.m. here at church. We'll be having our first meeting. And also mark in your calendar, April 1st to 7th is the first week. It's a one-week fasting and prayer. We usually do it a half quarterly in the church. So this is a month that is due. So month of April, 
first to the seventh will be fasting. All of us in the church. And we'll be meeting here for prayer at 7 p.m. April 1st to April 7th. Amen. So make a note of that as well. Okay, and the home sale meetings location is updated. So basically the Suri Central crew, which is led by Sister Cheyenne, Sister Kawia, and Brother Joel, they will be meeting on Thursday at 7 to 9 p.m. So if you're by Suri Central, please plug in. And then East Suri, they'll be meeting at, uh, they'll be meeting at Brother Simon and Sister Marifa's house. And led by Victory and Brother Adam, they will be meeting on Tuesday at 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Please make a note of this so you can join in. Perhaps you have missed other locations and your location that week doesn't work for you. Feel free. That's why I'm saying this um, times and days so you can be able to go and plug in at a different location if possible. The Langley crew will be meeting at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Tuesdays. And Abbasford will be meeting on Tuesday at 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. So please make a note of that. I said Thursday. Okay. Please write it down on Suri Central projection. Thursday, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. So take a note of that. Take a picture of it. These are the home cell groups. Okay, may I please uh, invite uh, Pastor to come up and we're going to, oh, yes. Anybody here for the first time, can you please wave at me? Anybody? Come on, let's give him a clap unto God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we are always happy to welcome our new visitors in the house. Uh, we would like to know your name, if you could please stand on your feet. We just want to know your name and where you're from. And we are happy to see. Um, somebody will bring the mic to you. Um, praise the Lord. Uh, my name is uh, Epineri. I'm, and I'm just a uh, first year. And I'm from Fiji. Welcome to the restored house. <laughs> the ashes will give you a communication card so you can fill it out. And we can get in touch with you. You're welcome to the restored house. And we have our sister in the back there. May we please know your name? Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm Kebel Chala Bima from Liberia. Welcome, welcome to the restored house. It's good to see you. The ashes will give you a communication card as well so we can get in touch with you. We are happy to see you all. Amen. I will invite Pastor to give us a benediction and a few announcements before we start the AGM meeting. <laughs> 